have a brief chat about uh, who we are at Kerr Cellars and who I am. I'm a golfer who makes wine. I've traveled on tour for 23 years all over the world and gotten to experience different cuisines, different wines uh, inherently unique to the area that we were in. I'm an aspiring sommelier. Uh, obviously, you've heard I've just passed my level one about a year ago. I'm a mom. I'm a foodie. Uh, I'm a breast cancer activist. I'm obsessed, absolutely obsessed with learning about wine. And l I love the history of wine. How did I get into making wine? Again, traveling all over the world, trying many different wines. Um, my palate was really, really born in the Napa Valley. You know, in the early 2000s, we had a tournament, the Samsung World Championship of Women's Golf, which was a top 30 invite only event. And I was lucky to play in it for about five years in a row. Uh, and I would play my practice rounds at 6 AM in the morning because all I wanted to do with, with my other fellow golfer friends was to go wine tasting, because golf is boring, but wine tasting is fun. <laughs> so, um, and, gol and wine keeps you sane in golf. If you've ever played golf, you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> I fell in love with the Napa Valley, the topography, the people. Um, the, the natural beauty of the land and, you know, visited many of the historic uh, wineries, Robert Mondavi, Staglin family, Silver Oak, Spotswood, Duckhorn, the list goes on and on. A 14-year golf career led me to a place where I had the chance to make wine. That led me to Pride Mountain Vineyards and Suzanne Pride Bryan. I got the opportunity to meet Suzanne and told her my story about my mother being diagnosed with breast cancer in 2002 and starting our foundation, Birdies for Breast Cancer, in 2003. And I told her I was very interested in learning about wine, making wine, and um, for 15 minutes she, she talked to me about how difficult it was and why I shouldn't do it. And then I said, well, I'm really genuinely interested in learning about this trade and learning about making wine, and I don't need to make any money off of this wine. And she said, excuse me? <laughs> You know, this 30-year-old at the time wanted to make a very high-quality, limited-quantity Napa Valley cab, and I didn't want to make any money on it. it. makes no sense, right? I must be crazy. Well, I must be crazy to be a golfer anyways <laughs> and make a living doing that. Once she heard that, we, we went into a joint venture in a partnership to, to make about 100 cases of a very high-quality, uh, limited-quality Napa Valley cab. We've done that. I met Suzanne Pride in May of 2008, and after that 30-minute to 45-minute conversation, um, we had blends for curvature that night. Uh, the first blends for our 2006 vintage curvature uh, were born that night. For the first 10 years of this wine, which is our 10th bottling this year, we endeavored to give 100% of the profits away to breast cancer research, and we've done that. We've raised $250,000 from the sales of curvature, and they've gone to various organization, so that's pretty cool. We can only make so much wine with the Prides, um, whom I just adore and respect. I mean, they're one of the top wineries in, in all of the Napa Valley, and um, they knew that eventually we would want to do a for-profit endeavor. So, you know, we searched high and low for winemakers. They helped us, and finally, with the grace of, good, good luck, grace of God, Sally Johnson, in her own right as a rock star winemaker, introduced us to Helen Keplinger. So I don't think I really need to introduce uh, Helen Keplinger too much to you guys. Um, she was on the cover of Wine Spectator. She was Food and Wine Magazine Winemaker of the Year. She has her own brand. She's, uh, she's one of the top cult winemakers in, Napa, in all of the Napa Valley. Um, and we had really a, a kinship uh, because my meticulous attention to detail, um, almost uh, annoying, uh, at times uh, for how perfect I like to get everything. If anybody's ever seen me putt and line up a putt, they, they know what I'm talking about. Um, but we wanted to, we just hit it off and we wanted to make wine together and we talked about the different kinds of wines that we wanted to make together and um, it was just a kinship. Um, and that's what you've got in your glass right now is the 2013 uh, Reserve Napa Valley, the Kerr. Uh, we're a very young brand. This is actually our first vintage of this wine release. It got 93 points from Wine Spectator. It's the backbone of our tiny growing brand. There were 285 cases produced, of which our total production right now, we probably are the smallest production, one of the smallest production wineries here. Um, we only make 1,500 total cases. So the composition of this wine is 55% Cabernet from the Beckstoffer Missouri Hopper Vineyard and 45% 
of Pritchard Hill Merlot, the Huey Vineyard, up at Nine Suns. Um, it is aged in New French Oak, 70% for 22 months. Uh, it's got a medium plus toast, and it's got flavors of cassis, cocoa, forest floor, um, baked brown sugar, and it's just absolutely delicious. Um, but I'm biased. <laughs> <laughs> um, and my goals and aspirations for this brand are to make the very best wine possible every year with the best vineyard sourcing. That's very important to us. We're negociants. We don't have our own licensed bonded winery currently. Um, to have the best winemakers, to not cut corners no matter what, to be painfully meticulous with the small details. Um, hopefully one day we have our own winery, but we'll see how that goes. Um, and we definitely want to grow the brands that we currently have, curvature of which right now currently there is a Sonoma Coast Chardonnay from the Bacigalupi Vineyard uh, and our Napa Valley Cab, which is sourced all over Oakville. Uh, in our Kerr brand, we have a Sauvignon Blanc, which is a white uh, Bordeaux style, Sauvignon Blanc, Sauvignon Musquet, Semillon, it's absolutely delicious. That actually got 90 points from, from Wine Spectator as well. Uh, we do a Pinot Noir from Sonoma Coast from 13 and 14 from the Wallala Vineyard. Uh, we endeavor to have the best sourcing because obviously we're negotiants, so every three years or so that changes. We're, we're trying to lock down long-term contracts right now. You know how that goes. Um, and also the reserve. So we're very proud of what we've done in a very short period of time. Um, it's pretty cool. So that's my spiel. Oh, wonderful. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you.